Judge, thank you for this opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Men and women of the San Antonio Fire Department, thank you for being here. Thank you for everything that you do every single day. Dean family, I love you. Phipps family, we love you. Robert, you're out there still doing it, man, and we love you. Mr. Johnson, first of all, I appreciate you looking at me. And so I want to provide some images for you of that night. And I do hope that you will keep these images in your head, just like the rest of us do every single day. Um, our members go out, they take care of people on the worst days of their life. We provide comfort, we save them, we're compassionate. We do all of that. That's the expectation of this community. So at 9 12 on the 19th, Ladder Engine 35 responded to that incident. That captain is sitting right there. They responded to the Spartan Gym, 6,700 Ingram. There was smoke in the Spartan Gym. I used to be a fire captain. If I pull up and I see cars in that parking lot, guess what? Man, somebody's in there working out late. They're cleaning up. They're paying the bills. They're in there. They were coming to save you. They were coming in there to save you because we thought that you were there. They wanted some of the worst smoke and heat and fire conditions I've ever seen in my career. Shortly after getting in there, they had to have a mayday. And they're fighting for their lives to get out. When I arrived, one of the images I want you to take is I arrived, we had two people lost, trapped in that fire, <coughs> 24 mile an hour winds. I see them bringing Brad out. Brad is blacker than this chair. And he is fighting to get off of that stretcher and go back in there and get Scott. I see them put him in the garden in the medic unit. I had no idea whether he was gonna live or he was gonna die, but he was horrifically burned. I grabbed this captain, who's one of the finest captains in this fire department, and he wanted to go back in. I had a couple hundred firefighters that would have risked suicidal conditions that night to go in and save our brother. I told Captain Silva, I said, you know what? Whatever happens tonight, you're a good captain. I didn't know what the outcome was going to be. Shortly after that, we lost Robert Boskins coming in to save Scott and Brad. And thank God we got him out and he's back at work and he was released that night. We fought that fire for a couple of hours. We had to go defensive. It broke my heart, my spirit, not to be able to get, not to be able to get one of mine out. That has never happened in the history of this department since 1891. We have never lost a firefighter in a building and we had to go defensive. It was a huge defeat for us. So, when we finally got the fire out, we went in and, and we found Scott. What they didn't say, Scott was a physical fitness dude. He was a crossfitter. Scott died on a stack of kettlebells. Scott was on a stack of kettlebells when we found him. As we brought him out in front of the brave men and women that, that fought that fire, you stood in the parking lot and you claimed to be the victim to the media. As we are bring our beloved, our bright star of this organization out, you play the victim. So we got that out. On that Monday, I saw a video of you. I saw a video of you walking behind the strip mall, claiming to look for homeless, but you're looking for cameras. Fortunately enough for us, on one camera that was there, you didn't find it. So the night of the fire, I saw you walk up there. I saw you walk up there 
and something light and the smoke emitted out right afterwards. So I've often wondered, and this is gonna give me some semblance of closure for me, why did you not at that time say, hey, you know what? Man, I burned this building up, I made a huge mistake, I took the life of this firefighter, I, I uh, orphaned his children. You didn't have the courage to admit that you made a mistake and come forward then. But then my arson squad, we, we trailed you, we followed you. And you went on with life like nothing ever affected you. And I really can't understand that. So I'm gonna leave you with another image. And so these images that I'm leaving with you, um, I'll carry them till the day I die. So Jennifer was six months pregnant. Scott's body was unrecognizable. And Jennifer wanted to see Scott's body. And I'm sorry, family, I love you. He needs to understand us. Jennifer wanted to see his body. And she was so mad at me because I, I was preventing that, but she was six months pregnant. I didn't want to cause any trauma to that unborn child. So I went to the house and I took Scott's wallet and I took his ring. His wallet was the only thing that was recognizable on his body. And it had rested up against his hip. So one side was unburned. There was a Dallas Cowboy star on one side, the other side was completely black. And I took a blanket and I laid there, I said, laid it on Jennifer's lap, six months pregnant. I sit on the floor with her and I pull the things out of his wallet. Driver's license melted, a couple other IDs, but the receipt for the wedding ring that he bought her, the receipt for the wedding ring that he bought her was in his wallet. I will never be able to get that out of, out of my head. The community, they love this department. They love the San Antonio Fire Department. And that day, all of us were doing an absolute job that we loved. And for, for, for a reason, you, you kind of took away some of our innocence because now we realize, okay, there are people out there that want to harm us. And that's what happened to us. But as we go forward, I really want you to take time and, and, and relive these images because you made a choice to do what you did. You had an opportunity to reverse it some way, but you did not. And so you're gonna spend significant time of your life behind bars. I too, I forgive you, and it's been so hard, but I realize I have to forgive you so I can free myself of this anger and this pain and this hurt that every time I think about you, I want to jump across this rail. When I saw you at the bond hearing, I thought about doing things with people I've never imagined in my life. And that is not me. So for the sake of my mental health, for the sake of my well-being, I have to forgive you. But I will never, ever forget. And neither will any of these people out here the residents that we serve every day, we will always have a, a, a deep scar. It, and it's a scar that it, it's ripped off every time we think about Scott. So when you die, I hope you live a long life behind bars and come out and whatever. But when you die, we will still be loving and missing Scott. I hit my phone. And I want to see how long I've been talking. I've been talking for 13 minutes and 27 seconds. Scott and Brad responded to that call at 9-12. 9-28, their lives changed forever. 16 minutes. 16 minutes, their lives and our lives as an organization and a city, it changed forever. 
So I appreciate you indulging me almost 16 minutes. And I appreciate the fact that you've looked at me this whole time. So please, let these images, let this trauma, let this pain that all of us have articulated here to you today, let it soak in. Let it soak in. Thank you. Thank you. 